done with my little presentation video and Mike is cool with me. So that's great. Hello. Welcome to the Sign Herald discussion. Uh, my name, Mistress, I always forget that. Magda. My name sign is Magda. Um, and that's all the SimCom I'm going to do because I hate SimCom. Um, so welcome. I know some of you here are sign heralds, would like to be sign heralds. Some of you just want to know what we are, what we do, and hopefully I can, you know, explain some of that. And then we can have some discussion about challenges, successes, any questions on how it works, whatever you guys would like. Um, at about one hour, they're going to actually close down uh, the breakout rooms for a brief reset. And then if we are not done, we can come right back here to this classroom and finish up because that's about half an hour before the end of the class. Um, so to start off, sign heralds. Um, in the SCA context, a sign herald is basically exactly what we think of when we think of a voice herald, only we use sign, particularly the sign that is native to your area whether that is ASL if you're in the United States and a good chunk of Canada, or um, I always screw up how to pronounce it, Aslan, which is um, Australian Sign Language or New Zealand Sign Language, depending on where you're at. Drakenwald has a whole bunch of different signs because there's no such thing as universal sign language. Um, and so we try to do our best. Um, we sign courts. We sign announcements, we can sign on the field, and sometimes we get tapped to help out and sign um, classrooms and, and that kind of thing. Um, and so everything that comes with being a voice herald is the same for us. Um, ideally, we would love to be included in especially like pre-court information, just like you would share with your voice herald if you are nobility. And the secrets that those heralds also get before court are the same for us. We keep the scroll secret until they're revealed in court. Um, so how to become a sign herald. Within the SCA, as much as we would love to have qualified, certified interpreters, it's not cost effective. Um, we can't afford it. I wish we could, but our smaller groups and for the many events that we do and for the amount of hours we would need, it, it, we just can't afford them. Um, and so we rely on our volunteers. And anyone at any level can become a sign herald. We do ask when you're first starting that you learn about 25 signs. Um, which we do have available on both the Sign Herald pay, uh, Facebook page. The uh, There's a Silent Herald practice group, and it should be on the SCA Herald page. And it's the 25 signs you need to know to sign a court. And they're very simple signs. Um, and then hopefully you will learn more, and you will learn more vo vocab, and you will learn more about how to build your, your concepts. And, and as you grow, you'll feel more comfortable in a signing environment. So any, you know, anyone can do it, even from a beginning level. And I know that is a misconception sometimes we've gotten within the SCA. Trying to think where it's next on my notes. And many kingdoms have a kingdom sign herald. And I am currently the Society Sign Herald. So by all means, if you reach out to them, they can reach out to me and we can have our communication that way. Some interesting stories, fun things we've seen within the SCA that we're hoping to make better. Um, first off, because we are visual, because we are signing, we sometimes tend to forget and like within a court situation, uh, we will put whoever is signing at either the far ends or 
behind thrones, which makes it hard to see. So we're hoping to start changing that. Uh, we've had, and of course now, oh, any recommendations on ways to learn? Excellent. Um, personally, I'm a big fan of lifeprint.com and I'm going to put that in the chat. It is a spectacular online free um, service that is um, taught by Dr. Bill Vickers, who is a deaf instructor. And he has, if you scroll down halfway down the page, it says ASLU, if you're doing ASL. Um, I have yet to get a lot of resources for the other countries as of yet. I'm working on it. But I know LifePrint is solid and it, it gives basic, uh, it's just like, you know, learning from like Duolingual, you know, you're going to learn your basics, you're going to learn your name, and he's got a, a beautiful curriculum. And that will help you that way. I also suggest you come on Thursdays at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, which is my time. We have a Silent Herald um, practice group on Facebook, and that's the name of it, Silent Herald practice group. We are... And we meet every Thursday and we will help with signs you may want to learn. There's not a set curriculum. We have a lot of discussion. And, you know, we kind of learn depending on what you need to learn. You know, what you want to know. Uh, and I just realized I skipped a huge chunk. Um, when this started back in the 80s, which is when the first time we see the term um, Silent Herald show up within the SCA. Um, we are starting to step away from that uh, that term. We're now using Sign Herald because this better describes what we do. Um, ASL is not necessarily silent. Uh, we make a lot of, you know, there's clapping, there's mouth, no, uh, mouth morphs. I've learned that word now. Um, and so sometimes it's not as silent and some people it just, it's a better expl explanation of what we're doing. We are signing. That is what we are. And we are signers who are also heralds. Um, I'm trying to scan here as well. Oh, fabulous. East Kingdom also has uh, a practice. If you would send that to me, I would love to know so I can attend as well. Um, Yes, and that's exactly where I was heading with that. Please, we're trying to make sure that we do not block the sign heralds. I can't tell you how many courts I've gone to where the sign herald will be signing in a nice spot. Um, here in Artemisia, we've started having them just off to the side of our royals or, or whichever court is speaking at that time. So if it becomes a baronial court, they might move down the line so that they are then seen and they stand between the thrones where it's open. But I can't tell you how many times I've seen someone come up to give an announcement, move to the side after, can I address your populace? And then immediately stand right in front of the sign herald. <laughs> and I've had incidences where the, you've got someone signing, someone's coming up and giving a presentation. And I know they're, they're not thinking about it and they hand like papers or the prizes because that person happens to be there, but they're the signer. Um, it does happen quite a lot. Um, and a lot of it's because we're still getting used to it. Uh, we have been a society uh, recognized deputy position to the um, College of Heralds for just over 10 years now, but we're still getting to a point where we're normalized, where we're seeing in more kingdoms and there's that. The rainbow trim. Um, so that's something to, to consider. Um, as far as need, which does come up, we do have many deaf members within the SCA. We're also an aging society, as we've I, we've all heard, and hearing often goes. But it's also handy because often, and I know it's across the known world. Sometimes we have those who are sitting on the uh, on the thrones and such, who are not theatrical types, who may not project very well, 
or you're in an outdoor situation where hearing is not easy to, you know, as well. So this gives some great visual cues. And with just a little education, you too can know exactly what's happening in court without actually having to hear it. Um, And of course, in, in the midst of my whole explanation, because I am nervous, um, I completely forgot. So yes, I am the Society Sign Herald. I am also deaf. Um, I have been playing over 30 years within the SCA. And so I not only am I the society officer, I'm also a user of the service. And so I appreciate everybody who does what they can to help. Um, but so it's it's good for those who have hearing loss as well as, the, as those are don't, who don't. Um, and I'm trying to think if there's anything else big that I need to cover with the basics or otherwise we can turn on cameras if you would like. We can ask questions, start discussion about things you want to know, how we work, how to make it work better in your kingdom, um, challenges you might have had, uh, successes you might have had. And so that way we can hopefully help each other, educate each other, and make sign heralds better. So I got a quick uh, question slash comment, kind of jumping uh -huh. back to the location of the sign herald um, mm -hmm. in court. Would it and I've seen this kind of be directed a little more, but having a dedicated spot for disabled um, people um, and having maybe them like, because my thought is also if you've got two sides in a row, even people walking up, let's say a processional, and there's a lot of people walking up, mm -hmm. that side is on one side or the other, that causes issues, obviously. So, so you know, probably have them on one side, you know, right in front of people. Right. Like and, and in truth, I have many, many thoughts. So as much as I love that a lot of kingdoms are offering like the first two rows for those, especially with hearing issues, um, that's lovely. But at the same time, there are those of us who don't want to self-identify. And I admit I'm a troublemaker. I like to sit in the back of court because often <laughs> I'm also leaning into my friends going, I have no idea what's going on. Or, you know, and so I don't like sitting in the front because it's a little bit of a distraction. And so we can't really force folks to sit there. We can encourage, but we can't really force them to do so. And so ideally, you want to have them where they're best, you know, to be seen. And yes, yeah, sometimes like a processional, it can be a little bit hairy. Um, my biggest thing for me is... Often, like I said, we have that wonderful wall of all the thrones and all those people and the guards and the ladies in wait. And then we put them at the farthest end. And so those of us who are following along in sign or also trying to lip read, like I do, we end up playing ping pong the entire court. We're watching to see what the action is. And then we're turning our head to catch from the sign herald. And, you know, on Twelfth Night, um, often when courts are really long, that can be a bit of a workout. And so ideally you want them close to where the action is happening. Um, there are those kingdoms. I know there's a couple and I know we're trying to get one done here where they've created a box. Mm -hmm. right, for them to stand so they're slightly elevated, which is nice, especially when you're short like I am. And it's wonderful that way. Um, and so that is some options. And it's going to depend on your kingdom. It's going to depend on your setup for court. It's going to depend on that. But ideally, you want them near wherever the action is. And for like a processional, it might be an idea instead. I mean, <laughs> you want to stand probably closer to the audience where so the processional can walk by you and then cut across, you know, behind you and then move behind the court, uh, thrones. Um, Although we've had great success, because often yeah. it's just, it's going to depend on where people stand and how your kingdom has their processions. Um, I've also forgotten, because again, I'm all nerves today. Um, on the sign Herald, on this SCA 
Herald page. There's a section that says um, Sign Herald. And if you scroll down, there's also a bunch of videos that was done by our first Sign Herald. Um, and I wish I knew which title she's using. I believe she's using Mistress uh, uh, Nisa, um, who um, is out of Kalantir. And she did a whole series of videos of SCA specific signs. And so you can always see those because we have a lot of language that we use that doesn't appear in ASL. Um, and those, the creations of those signs have happened pretty much over the last 20 years. Um, they have evolved. Sign language is a living language. And so it does evolve. And we have had interpreters, we have had codas, and we have had the deaf all part of deciding what signs we want to use. And we have all made changes over the years to make that closer to, because at the end of the day, it is a it is the language of the deaf. And so we have to respect that because it is a living, marginalized community. And so often, one of the things I always say is if there's a deaf person who lives in your kingdom and they come up and go, I, that sign you did for, you know, whatever, that's not, that's not the sign I want. And they show you a different sign. Well, that is now the sign you use. And it may be a regional difference. It may be, um, and, and so again, it, it, start, it, it, it evolves, it changes. Um, some of our signs that we use within the SCA, SCA signs um, are a little dated. Mm -hmm. um, initialized signs like knight, laurel, um, even pelican. And um, a lot of those are very, yes, king. Well, king and queen are in ASL. Um, but a lot of them are very dated and very much stuck in the 90s and a lot of that comes down to at the time we were in the 90s and that's what we went with and now it's been so long that the, a lot of us who are deaf and, and use this language it's it's our home signs it's we're used to it and we like it and so we're, we're not, we haven't changed it there hasn't been a, a call for it yet it may change later um but we go from there. Uh, I'm trying to scan because I know I'm seeing a lot of questions pop up. Um, so one more recent question was the for spe SCA specific signs. Is there a resource available that can be shared? Uh, let me pull up the SCA Herald's page because a lot of them are there. We have a dictionary there. We have all kinds of wonderful stuff on that page. <laughs> Sign heraldry. There we go. And there it is. And it's heraldry.sca.org slash signheraldry.html. And then another and question that's on a personal, more of a personal side with you being um, deaf yourself, how do you manage for court when you interpret? Um, they themselves. That's a great question. And I appreciate it because. It's part of the reason why I'm not a big fan of doing it often. I have done it a few times. I have, because I do read lips. Um, it's an absolute nightmare for me. Uh, very recently, within two weeks ago, I actually got to sign for my kingdom's sign herald, her uh, pelican elevation. And it was very exciting because I, I was very touched when she asked. And I just asked for the script of what they were going to do for her elevation. And I had that in front of me. And then I just kind of used my little theatrical moment of, okay, I've got, I know so-and-so's talking. This is what they're supposed to say. I'm going to sign what I have here, which was fun because they did go off script. Um, for, <laughs> but I couldn't hear it. So I just signed what I had. Um, when we had folks doing the spontaneous, um, just, you know, the, the, the speakers of the orders and such, I actually had a wonderful up and coming 
um, sign herald out in our kingdom who signed that part because she could hear it. And we tag teamed. Um, speaking of tag teaming, ideally, when you do a court, especially if it's going to be long, you want at least two sign heralds. Um, signing is hard. Signing is hard on your hands. Signing is hard on your brain because you're literally taking it and putting it to a different language. And it may not be a language you're incredibly familiar with. And even if you are familiar with it, it's a completely different grammar set. So the brain works a lot. And getting that in through the ears, out through the hand is a magical skill that takes a lot of work. And so ideally you want to so that they can switch off. Professionally, interpreters switch off as well. And they do it about every 15 minutes. Um, and it's nice to give them the break. Um, I know sometimes that's not feasible. And we want to do the best we can for our signers. Because again, we want your help to be <laughs> taken care of as well. Because I know it's, it's a hard job. Um, any other questions I might have missed? And like I said, if you want to ask them verbally, you can. I have my closed captioning. I have my hearing aid. I am prepared for you. If you want to practice your sign while you're asking, hey, we can have some fun with this. Um, I actually do have a question myself. Um, so I actually have a, I just met actually somebody who is deaf themselves. We're mostly just communicating right now through text until... I get my skills a little bit better. I do. I had, took 101 in college. Um, so I'm still very beginner. <laughs> but one of the questions that I have is, so I've done court heraldry. I am mm -hmm. a voice herald. Was a voice herald. I've been out for so long. But so one of my questions is more from, you have somebody who's coming up to, it's their first event. It, they're getting an award. Do we ever have, maybe a third herald who their job is i'm coming up to sign for the recipient we have somebody who's signing for the group but then we have one person who their job is to translate specifically for the recipient or recipients like if it's a newcomers and we have multiple deaf people that's an interesting idea i mean if i, I would love to see it out, in practice like if I have, like, I mean, I if we if we can make it work, I mean, I'd be interested to know how it goes. I mean, so I often we're short on on having signers, um, and so I mean, if you can make it work, it could be interesting. I know when I'm called up into court, uh, the sign herald and frankly, all of our voice heralds have come up with great ways of getting my attention. Um, there's one uh, voice herald out here who will specifically, right before he calls you know, my name, he makes eye contact and then he does a big my name sign and then, you know, points and at, in fact, at uh, Solstice, which had just happened, the one I signed the elevation for, I missed the signals, which was entertaining because of course everybody then is, you know, they know I'm there, and so they're all yelling. And of course, uh, that herald, bless him, was then doing the hand wave. And then I realized what was going on, and I could make the joke of, "Yes, let's yell at the deaf person, because that'll help." Um, I know it; it wasn't a big deal because I knew they they meant well. Um, but it would be interesting to see how that works. Yeah. Um, again, and I just worry about. If we have one person signing all of court and then one person signing just for one person, that's a lot. It is a lot. I agree. And, and I mean, and we can use those two to switch back and forth, you know, for the entire court. Then that's no. something. That that's a lot to ask for. It is voice herald, let alone silent heralds, because you guys. But again, do asking someone to dramatic. sign an entire court. Yeah. Is a lot. And so you want to give those breaks. Yeah. And so that's why I always say, you know, ideally you want more than one to switch. But I mean, sometimes it's not feasible. And sometimes we have to tap out. And we are working and I'm working on brainstorming other ways beyond just signing that we can make our courts accessible. Whether that is the awesome banners from Anstiora that have 
award Ooh. names, the award badge, and a brief thing about what that award is for, and that is also held up. Um, there is a test program right now to use CART services, which is someone who will type and is projected against oh. a wall. I know we have done some work where we've had um, a gentleman who has Bluetooth enabled hearing aids Close and he leaves his uh, phone sitting on the table up in front. Now, if we have a lot of folks who have Bluetooth enabled, that's a lot of phones on those tables. I'm looking and trying to find some system like a Bluetooth microphone that'll pick up that noise and send it out to multiple Bluetooth sources. I'm that looking. But we're trying um, to find that. I would. I know Ontier does on like Ontier Live and has been trying to record those and do those as live. I've actually used that personally when sitting way in the back of court and be able to hear in general. Mm -hmm. Um but they and then obviously you can also have the closed captioning in um Zoom. So that could be a, a way on that if yes. I don't know how many other kingdoms also do um those live. But that could be another way. And to it is an them. option. The only issue that, that we're dealing with is lag. Yeah. Oh, um, absolutely. But it is an absolute option. I have gone to courts with my speech to text on my phone, and mm -hmm. I've used that. Um, again, it depends on volume, it depends on your background noise, how well that picks up. But again, we're looking at as many different. I'm a big fan of let's throw everything at the wall and use it all. And more, uh, is it more game? Um, what is your question? <laughs> it was more of a comment okay. about um, having a deaf person in court. And um, I'm just sort of a few things floating around in my brain. Mm -hmm. um, background, I'm a registered sign language interpreter, have been for 30 years, um, only slightly longer than I've been in the SCA. Um, and I mean, I, I get Lady Constance's point about, you know, what happens if a, a deaf person comes, like is called into court and they need to understand what is being requested of them or told to them, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just wondering if there is some kind of system we can put into place. And um, Constance, I'm an aunt here as well. So maybe we can brainstorm afterwards. I'm more than happy to. Um, and Lisa, I mean, I, from my experience, I've had sign heralds just move into my line of view. Yeah, and that's one of the and, things I was going to suggest. And that works really, really well. I mean, and that would be my first instinct. Is yeah. Get to where not only can you be seen by those who are in the audience, because there may be others who still use your services, but you want to be in that line of view. Um, and that is... And when it's when you've got your sign herald set up where the action is happening, they're right there anyway. And that's nice. And so that's why I'm trying to encourage more of the action view versus the we're just going to tap them onto the, the outside edge. Because then, you know, if you're called into, you know, royal court, the, the herald, you know, the sign herald is way at the other end and you're never going to see them. But if they're standing where the action is, then they're right there. But that's, that's a fabulous point. And by the way, thank you for being an interpreter. Interpreters are awesome. <laughs> thank you. Um, yeah, and it's also um, kind of a learning curve for the court coordinators too about where to put yes. the sign heralds because like you said, you want to be where the action is and really that should be as close to the reigning like the, the heads of court as possible. Yep. And that's um, why I usually say, you know, pick a side because often they're two, you know. So pick one side or the other because often their vo voice herald stands dead middle. And just off to the side, you know, between those thrones because that way you get more view. And that's usually a pretty good spot. But again, your mileage may vary. And a lot of it's going to depend on your kingdom culture and how they set up their courts and the environment. And... Hopefully we will get it where we're so used to seeing it that it's just a matter of course. But we're still building that. Uh, Lisette, you have a question. So that was actually a consideration that we looked at for Ontier Twelfth Night this year. 
Um, I was the rain, uh, primary rain herald for Morgan and Livia, who just stepped down. Um, and I'm good friends with Ragna, who was our interpreter. Uh, we only had, we actually originally had two uh, people scheduled to do court heraldry, uh, to do the silent heraldry, but one of them couldn't make it because of the snows um, that we had in Ontier. So what we ended up doing, because so many people who uh, needed hearing assistance were watching the live stream, is we actually set up an independent camera that was specifically on her and did a picture in picture view for court to enable interpretation. And Zoom does have an interpreter button to help spotlight that and it's handy to use. And actually I did appreciate that because I watched all of the Ontario and like the board, uh, the board meet and greet it was fabulous watching her move to stand right behind who was speaking. Oh, it was so nice. Yeah. She is doing an amazing, amazing job. And uh, I had the pleasure of helping her become involved in sign heraldry when she attended her first event. And she's like, my friend is here. Can I sign for them? Um, and then she has since moved on to become our kingdom silent herald. Um, much to my great pleasure and joy. And she's doing her best to help get more people involved. So if anyone is in on tier and wants to be more involved in uh, Silent Herald, Ray, please feel free to reach out to me or to Ragna directly. Uh, if you reach out to me, I'll be happy to put you in contact. Wonderful. Um, any other questions I've missed in chat? Because I'm sure there's plenty. <laughs> I've not been the best about following along. It looks like just more some comments here and there, uh, but okay. not really questions. Do, do, do. You know, if nobody has questions as a thought. I, I want, you know, I want to add, uh, there's a wonderful comment about not using SEA specific signs, except for the specific name of, of awards and using ASL signs with expansion and clarification. That's wonderful. That is absolutely an, a wonderful choice. Um, if we have new deaf people, they're not going to know our home signs, which is why often it is a handy thing, just like when you're signing for ASL, if you're going to use an unusual sign, you fingerspell it first, then show the sign, and then you move on. Um, and it's a lot like when you're when we all first joined the SCA, we used to send them with our membership cards, the little cheat sheet of the language we use. It's the same thing that we're doing here. It's new vocabulary that folks learn when they're first coming in. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? Oh, okay, so I saw that one. How do I manage to interpret? Which is not very often. I did have a spectacular, um, a few, I've had a couple of crowns now who have asked me to sign the processional um, specifically. And like the first time I led the processional and I signed, and I had the voice herald behind me saying what I was signing. Um, the second time I did it, because they really wanted to drive home some points, because we're, we've been pushing sign heraldry in our kingdom, I signed in the processional, and there was no voice interpretation. And it was very interesting to watch, um, because I, I did it very, it was very much, inter it, it was performed sign you know it's performance sign so i really used some of my storytelling skills when i was signing it and made it very visual but at first there was definitely a lot of you know murmurs of what's going on and then it clicked in everybody's mind and they're like oh okay and it's just like when we've had processionals in a different language and it gave a chance also for folks to have a reminder that there are those amongst us who cannot hear what's going on and that we need signers, that we need visual cues and that it helps not only those who need those, but those who just can't hear for whatever reason because environment, because whoever's speaking is not a loud voice, whatever it is. And it all, we all lift each other up and it, it enhances our courts and enhances our experience within the SCA. Is there anything else? Any other questions? Any other challenges, successes, weird things you need to, you know, go 
you know, or anything that you've ever heard. I got a quick thought um, of something to do is actually go through. You said there was 25 standard signs yes. for everybody to learn. Um, and that maybe is our base level. Those I mean, if you would like, we can go over those. Uh, Let's see. The time. I mean, it looks like we got some time on it. I mean, if we don't have any other questions or comments, I can easily go into that. I have one, and it's actually a little bit of a personal issue in that, um, like I said, I've been a voice herald, but since I've left the SEA, I have developed fibromyalgia. So standing for a long time is out of the question. So my question is, is how do we deal with her with silent heralds who have mobility issues like me? I have the same issue. My, my back will not let me stand long. And so when I did the elevation, I was worried because when I saw the script, it was going to be long. We actually brought a bar chair, a bar stool. And I sat in the bar stool, which actually made me slightly taller than I normally am. We put it in the, you know, the space between the two thrones. Nobody, nobody realized I was sitting down the entire time. <laughs> they didn't realize it at all. And that's where I signed from. And it, it was great. My back survived. I was able to sign the entire time. And so by all means, if you need that kind of accommodation, then use them. The main thing that we're trying to do is just make sure that you are seen and that you can be seen by others. And if you need to sit down, a bar stool or something that's, you know, tall is a great way to go. Um, whether that's, you know, a box with a chair on it or like I said, the bar stool was nice, although it was fun to watch me climb into it. <laughs> so it was pretty tall and I'm very, very short. Um, uh, Morgan. Um, something that's come up in discussion a bit, um, in previous discussions I've had with other potential sign heralds in, in on tier, um, is the, and, and we're taught this in, uh, interpreter training programs. If you hear it, you sign it. However, <laughs> there is a caveat to that, that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. And especially in SCA culture, you're on the dais with all of the other broils. You might hear something that is not necessarily meant for the yes. audience. Yes. Right? So then you don't. Yep. And I know there's been a, a lot of heated discussion in some other kingdoms about, about that, especially with um, silent heralds who also happen to be professional interpreters. Yes. Um. But I am of the school of, because I've interpreted in um, a lot of university classes where I might be on the stage with the professor and they're having a little one-on-one -on -one convo with another student and I overhear it. That's not necessarily something that the general student body at large needs to hear. Right. So that's the kind of thinking that goes into that, right? If, if mm -hmm. they're having a, a little quiet conversation and you happen to hear it. It's not meant for those people out there to hear. If they wanted you to hear it for them, they'd say it louder, right? Or it wouldn't be one of these. Yeah. Thing, right. I mean, because sometimes those asides are, okay, what do we have next on the list? You know, or, hey, get get the court burning ready, whatever it is. And you'd spoil the surprise. Exactly. Yeah. And so, yes. No, I absolutely agree. Uh, Rachel. I don't know why my video is disabled, but um, so I not only have the lack of height problem, but also I have some sign knowledge and I would love to learn more to be able to be of service to my barony. However, my concern is I have, um, I have arthritis and sometimes my fingers do not always cooperate. Oh... I don't know if there's anyone in the East that is willing to kind of do some more work, but um, I just worry that my disability is going to end up um, excluding me from something that could potentially be more helpful. So one of the things I'm going to add is um, there are plenty of folks who are deaf and sign language is their primary language and they also have arthritis. 
And so there are there are some modifications that can be done and it's still understood. Um, and so I don't want you to just throw it away just because you're arthritis. Um, by all means, though, if you can only do so much, don't don't push beyond that level. Please save your hands as much as you, you know, if you're having a bad day, there's nothing wrong with going, I can't do it today. Um, well, I'm also, I mean, I'm very interested to find out how, like the programs that you were talking about as mm -hmm. far as the typing to put it up on the screen. Um, where would I find more information as far as those? Because um, typing well, is not a problem. Well, CART services as a whole is, is usually a professional agency that does that. We are okay. playing with some alternatives, whether that is using a uh, like a monitor and a projector, whether mm -hmm. that is, you know, like the home, because there's those of us now who instead of TVs, we have projectors and it just goes against the wall. Um, there, and there are some that we can set up using a projector on your phone and as you type. So we're looking into those kind of things. It is still more research right now and finding out what may or may not work. Um, and I'm in, like I said, and I'm interested to see what we can find and what we can and what we can try. And that that is also within the budget of our local groups. Because I'm very mindful that as much as we'd love it, we, we, we don't have especially the smaller groups do not necessarily have the financial needs to make this all work. And so we want to try to find what's best for that. Okay, thank you. Um, Robin. Hi. Um, let me know if you can't hear me. Um, I can't hear I you. I'm using <laughs> my captioning, but that's all right. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> so... Um, in my area, I'm one of, I've never met in real life another Silent Herald. Um, so I'm the only one that I know of in my area. Um, that being said, because I am a newer player and I've clearly never met another Silent Herald, um, a lot of people um, that are a part of court, don't know what to do with me. Yes. I don't know if that makes sense. So, no, like, it does. And you're not the don't... only you're not the only kingdom that's having this issue too, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, one, but... love that you, you're there. That's awesome, and you're getting them started. Um, the, there are lots of resources on that uh, the SCA Herald page that is actually directed towards. The nobility and and such so that they can understand what we do as well um also if you would like and this also goes to anyone in any kingdom if you would like um a meeting a class in your area especially if it's virtual um i am more than happy and more than willing i'm a stay-at-home mom so i have very little life outside of the sca and i would happily come have a talk have a chat teach a class Mm -hmm. uh, whatever we would like. I and... have made, sorry, no bounties. Um, I've made, um, I don't know what to call it, like a, a pretty little flyer kind of thing. Um, but I don't know, like, etiquette on how to pass those out to say, hey, you need this. Or <laughs> so now, is like, this a flyer hey. for the nobility or is this a flyer? Yeah, for... Okay. Anybody that's involved in court it has stuff like, um, here, hold on, I have it up right now. Um, it has stuff with, like, the volume, um, the context of, like, providing me with names and yeah. stuff like that. How to, um, how to fingerspell it, um, where I should be standing, uh, pacing, and, um, like, Please don't stand right in front of me when I'm signing. Right. But um, I just don't know how I should go about getting so those. Things. I would be the evil person and go to any event I go to and I would bring it into the royal room and the baronial rooms and put them out there. 
if you see them, you know, wandering around an event, I would hand it to them um, and, you know, get them to start seeing it. And so we understand. And Gigi. <laughs> Robin, we've spoken before. Catch me at an event. Okay. Hi. I was just checking to see if you were able to pause in about three minutes. So if you're able to pause at 11.55, we can okay. go ahead and restart the classroom. So you'll have to stop the recording and when you get back in, start it again. Yep. Thank and then you. we can come right back to this class and continue this discussion if you guys would you like. You can. In fact, because you two are co-hosts, you can be begin putting people back in your class immediately. Um, oh, because a lot of it's going to be a bit of a, a bit of a, a, what do you call that? A bit of chaos. Yes, that's the word. Thank you. Yeah, that's a PC word. I'm going to take a screenshot for so that I have that so I can move everybody into the class as quick as possible. Brilliant. Brilliant. But yes, while we take our break, think of more questions. Uh, just as a quick aside, as we're about to move to break, another piece of advice for that new Silent Herald is to reach out to your principal Herald for your kingdom for help with that networking, because they are going to know the people who need to have those flyers and be able to coordinate with them. And, and it might be something to, you know, when we have the pollings and the crown announces new people shooting off that email every couple of years, you know, and hey, welcome to the throne. Here's some info. <laughs> as as well, well, by all means, Marie. as well as try to go to pre-court business. That's also really important. I don't know if that was said before that, but I try to make it my point to, to show up so people know who I am, what I want to do, and what my services are to do as well. And Lenny, are you going to get, oh. gonna be a Winter Kingdom? Say it again. Are you going to be a Winter Kingdom? When? <laughs> Next weekend. This coming weekend. Um, I don't know how. Where in in on uh, Broken, Broken Arrow in Vinham. I don't know. I think that's pretty far from me. Um, I can try, but I can't make any promises. All right, if you're there, grab me. Okay. And Lenny, if we don't get to you know fully answer your question, we can come back and answer. But what is your question? Lenny, you had a question? I don't know. Ooh. Well, I had to so right now we're just discussing the sign herald yeah it's not actually a, a, a teaching sign but i'd have to i'll have to look there is a class on the specific signs so um it's the atlantia university and i will pull that up and if anything i will post that february 3rd and 4th i'll get yes. the link and if anyone has a link for that that would be great Because I know they'll have classes. And then, then at this point, per Gigi's request, I'm going to turn off the recording. Sounds like we're going to shut everything down for a minute and then get back to it. 